So in this video, we're going to find a unit or length one vector that's perpendicular to two given vectors. And the idea is that once we have established the geometric cross product properties, we can use them to do things. So in this example, it says find a unit vector that is orthogonal to both uh, u equals four negative six two. Look at that stray comma right there. That's naughty. And uh, the vector v equals one negative two one. And so if we one of the property one, sorry, was that u cross v is orthogonal to both u and v. So if we have two vectors u and v and we want a vector that's orthogonal to them and we're going to want this when we find equations for planes. If we want a unit vector we just need that's orthogonal to both u and v we just take the cross product of u and v and then we normalize it by dividing it by its length or multiplying by one over the length scaling that vector down to length one. So I want to take the cross product of these two, but before I just take cross products, I always look to see if there are common factors. And so here what I want to notice is that u can be rewritten as two times the vector two, negative three, one. And I want to do this because if I want a vector that's perpendicular to both u and v, if the vector is perpendicular to u, it's also going to be perpendicular to the vector two negative three one because this vector is parallel to the vector u. So what I would do is say, hey, I don't need to use, I don't need to use u, I'll use this vector w that is two negative three one so that I have a, a smaller vector I'm working with and I'll find the cross product of w and v and I know that the result will be both perpendicular to w and v from the geometric cross product properties but if I'm perpendicular to w I'm also perpendicular to u so I'll still have that property that I want and then it's just a matter of calculating your cross product i j k and then we're going to do w cross v so negative 2 negative 3 1 and then v is 1 negative 2 1 so we just calculate the cross product it's going to be i times the matrix we'll cross the column and row that goes with i we get the matrix negative 3 negative 2 1 1 minus j right here cross the row and column that goes with j get the determinant 2, 1, 1, 1 plus k, cross the row and column that goes with k, we get the determinant 2, 1, negative 3, negative 2, so 2, 1, negative 3, negative 2, and this is going to be negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 minus negative 1 times 1 is negative 2, minus j times 2 times 1 is 2 minus 1 times 1 is 1 plus k and k times 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 minus uh, negative 3 times negative uh, sorry negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 should make him look more like a 3 and then do your simplification we get i times uh, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1 so we really get the opposite of i right here, minus j times two minus one is one, so we just get one times j plus k times negative four plus three is negative one, so instead of multiplying by negative one, we can change this to minus k. And if you prefer component form, this would be the vector negative one, negative one, negative one, and this vector is perpendicular to both u and v. It's also the case that if I pull out the negative, a negative one, I get the vector one, 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 which is also a vector that's perpendicular to both u and v, because this is just the this is just the negation. This vector by itself is just a negation of the other one, so they're parallel. They just would face in opposite directions. So usually I would say, "Hey, look, I found a vector." one 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 that's perpendicular to both u and v and i would use that so i take advantage of the fact that you can factor scalars out to reduce the size of vectors that i'm working with or to get vectors that i think are easier to work with so i'll all positive components i prefer that over all negative components it's so it's a personal preference okay to do as long as the thing that you get 
is actually perpendicular to these. And if you wanted to check your work, you could simply take the dot product. I could come over here and say, hey, four negative two, two, when I dot that with one, 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 do I get zero? Because the dot product of perpendicular vectors is zero. So we get four times one minus six times one plus two times one. Hey, uh, four plus two is six minus six is zero. And we could check on this guy as well. If we multiply by one, one, dot, take the dot product with one, 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 we get one times one is one minus two plus one that's a zero. So that verifies that the vector we have is orthogonal to the original two. But we want a unit vector, so this needs to have length one. So we need to know the size of this guy. So let's give him a name so we can talk about him. Uh, we used u, v, and w. Um, let's call him vector r so we can have a, have a conversation about him. We want the size of r, which is just the square root of the sum of the squares of the vector components, but when you square ones, you get ones. So this is just the square root of three. So r hat, the vector that the unit vector perpendicular to both u and v, or a perpendicular vector to both u and v, would be given by one over the square root of three times the vector one, one, one.